Many theories about the lost city of Atlantis have been proposed all over the world. Around the Mediterranean Sea seems to be where the most serious experts are looking. Egypt was so proud of a certain group that they referred to as the Sea People that they actually recorded the battles for the world to see what they accomplished. In this example, the Sea People tend to be wearing an outfit like this, maybe a kilt or whatever you call it, often described as having horned helmets. You can see the Egyptians in their boats surrounding and fighting against the Sea People. There's that kilt again in their boats. Another image here to show how valuable they think this fight was. Here it shows perhaps Ramsey holding on to the rope and showing that the sea people are now in captivity in Egypt. So this apparently was a big conquest. One group of the sea people that have been thought to be descendants of Atlantis were the Sheridan. Here it says the unruly Sheridan whom no one had ever known how to combat. They came boldly sailing in their warships from the midst of the sea, none being able to withstand them. Once again, the reason why Ramses II was so proud of his accomplishment of defeating these sea people. You have other places in the Mediterranean that people believe was Atlantis. Over here you have Thera or Santorini. This was a giant volcano eruption that occurred and some believe that it was the location of Atlantis. Others believe Crete because it was actually destroyed when the Santorini eruption occurred. A giant tsunami killed everyone on the island. Then others go further west and some have a case for Malta, and then Sardinia comes up as a candidate also. Now the truth of the matter is that descendants from Atlantis probably did live in many of these locations because the descendants obviously did travel the Mediterranean. But the big question is not where the bloodlines of the Atlantans ended up. The big question is where did the Atlantans come from? Now many people who study the subject will often go and read what all the various authors have to say about where Atlantis is or was. But if you're going to truly try to figure out this mystery, you must start with the originating author, and that is Plato. Everyone else tried to interpret what Plato had to say. But Plato, who lived around 400 BC, was the originating author, at least the author that wrote down the story. In reality, this story had been passed down in various ways and by word of mouth even. A very old priest of Egypt told the story to Solon, who then passed that story on to Critias who then passed that story on to Plato. It's quite likely that Plato did his homework and gathered together all the information he could to tell the most accurate story. But we should certainly expect that small parts were not passed down completely accurately. Yet, any accuracy that is there is going to be learned by reading what Plato had to say way more than any other author. Once again, he was the originator of this story. So let's see what he had to say. If you take a moment to Google Plato, Atlantis, text, you can find the full texts by clicking the sacred-text.com Atlantis. And there it is. You have Timaeus and Critias. These are the two stories containing everything Plato had to say about Atlantis. So you could click in there and read these stories yourself. But when we get into Plato's text, it would appear that he describes Atlantis as not within the Mediterranean Sea, 
but past the Pillars of Hercules. Most scholars believe that that is the Straits of Gibraltar. There are also other theories, though, that the Pillars of Hercules could be referring to this little gap between Sicily and Italy. Still others believe that the Pillars of Hercules were located around Greece, where the volcano erupted this area here. But as I will show you, Plato makes it pretty clear which Pillars of Hercules he was referring to. 